It's day three of Duramax ownership, so why not take it on a 500 mile road trip? Yes, Brooklyn and I are traveling to Rexburg for the holidays. We'll be up in Grace, and then back in Rexburg, and then back here in Wyoming. So we're going to be driving our new 2002 Chevrolet Silverado 2500 HD Duramax. That is a mouthful, over a thousand miles this next week. And I've only put 150 miles on this truck. So in terms of reliability, we don't know what we're looking at yet, but uh, this is a very clean 2002 Chevy Duramax. We're very happy with our purchase. And uh, unfortunately, we bought this to be kind of a work vehicle for next year. Uh, more on that to come. I'm gonna have a really hard time using this truck to pull with, and I'll show you guys why on today's road trip. And if you haven't watched my introduction video to this truck, jump back onto the channel, stop what you're doing right now, and go watch that video, and subscribe here to Enhancing Your Vehicle Ownership for more great automotive content like this. That said, let's jump into the video. This is really my first experience owning a diesel. It's obviously not the first time that I've uh, worked around one. Um, I grew up on a farm driving tractors and uh, working construction, so I've been around diesel engines my entire life. So uh, this is a very clean Duramax diesel 6.6. It's a 2002, it's the LB7. So yes, this motor is prone to guaranteed injector failures, which the previous owner replaced twice. The last replacement was just 4,000 miles ago. So here's to hoping that this engine is gonna be super ultra reliable because that's a six and a half thousand dollar fix. Just check the oil for the road trip. It looks super clean and ready to go, which is good because it is over an oil change. So when we get to Rexburg, I'm gonna have to get the oil changed on this truck. But uh, I've been getting this truck road trip ready, so I have the block heater plugged in. It is a diesel, it is winter time. It's December, but it's not that cold out here for some reason in Wyoming. So I uh, got the oil checked. We got the fluids all topped off, ready to go. Getting this truck road trip ready has actually been a lot of fun. I've been moving everything over from the F-150 into the Duramax, and I want to clear something up right now. The F-150 is staying in the garage. We're not getting rid of it. I have 193,000 miles on it. It's the first truck that I've ever personally bought and owned. It's the second vehicle that, of course, I've driven around quite a bit. Put over 40,000 miles on this F-150. It's been amazing. It's still in really great shape and runs really good. Haven't had any major issues with it. So it's going to stay in the family. Uh, I'm probably going to get all new road trip stuff to put in that, but this Chevy got all the current road trip stuff and I was surprised at how much goes into taking long road trips. So to start off with long road trip supplies or driving supplies, I always carry a good flashlight and a set of gloves in the vehicle. That way if I break down the side of the road at night, I have a few tools. I have a tire pressure monitor down here as well. I use the AccuTire check gauge, digital check gauge. Uh, apparently it's dead or cold. Nope, just cold. This gauge is extremely accurate and works very well for checking tire pressures. Also on every long road trip I take my OBD scanner. With the diesel it's going to be a little different just because usually I have this so if I break down or throw a check engine light I can know what's going on and I can get parts for it. This I probably won't be working on myself. And then here in the center console I have our FM transmitter so that we can enjoy music. This is an older vehicle. It also splits the ports so that we can have multiple to charge your phone or to run like the dash camera off of. And I know this Duramax has several ports here so that's nice. Ford only has one. I always bring along a dash cam. It's not up on the window currently because it's really cold but I use a Scolbra 1080p camera that way we can see everything that's going on in front of us in front of the vehicle. Those are super nice if you get in an accident or somebody else gets in an accident. And for insurance purposes, sometimes they give you a break if you use a dash cam. And then here in the center console, I always have an onboard old style GPS. So I think this is a Garmin Nuvi, maybe it's a TomTom, -Tom, I can't remember. That's in case the cell phones are not working for some reason, Google Maps, we don't have reception or something. Or if I get lost and the cell phone's dead and won't charge, I can use this. This is an old cell phone for my OBD scanner because uh, the app doesn't work with iPhone. I have several charging cables. I have a bunch of different people ride with me all the time. So micro USB and then iPhone for our phones. Uh, we always carry a couple packets of Kleenexes. 
um, some placards that are like toothpicks and then Tums. That's just for on the road, on the go travel. In the glove box, this one doesn't come fully equipped yet. I have more Kleenexes, napkins, and then I always carry a brand new box of an assortment of fuses just in case, you know, we break down the side of the road. Under here I have our first aid kit that uh, is needing updating and probably really old. We use it more than I would like to think. A roll of paper towels and then clear back here in the back I have a 13,000 pound toe strap with quick hooks in case we get stuck or need to pull somebody else out. And of course also in the back seat under the other side comes the jack and all of the spare tire components wrenches to remove a tire in case we get a flat along the road and the tire on this Duramax is stored right up underneath the bed it's drop down winch style um, that's super important to always check your spare tire pressure because if you get a flat in Montana where you're two hours away from a town and your spare tire is not filled up that's bad and then in the back of all of my trucks I've always had a crate that uh, I can put additional things into so I usually have oil in here uh, just in case I need to do a top off at a gas station I don't have to buy any I have extra windshield washer fluid for long road trips. I have a couple of towing balls, and then I have tire chains for wintry, weathery, snowy conditions. And I don't have tire chains for the F-150, unfortunately, but uh, this truck come with them, so I'm going to take them along, just in case. And here's a cold start on a 2002 Chevy Duramax. Yep, it uh, really is pretty anticlimactic, but uh, it's a little chilly out here, it's not too bad. The truck's running a little rough, it'll warm up. It's got 174,000 miles on it. It's got a block heater that I've had plugged in for a while. Don't sound too bad, really. So we made it to Bozeman in the Duramax. That's almost four hours of driving. We drove it from Billings to Burlington and then from Burlington to Bozeman. So that's probably 300 miles. We used three quarters tank. It was super, super windy on the way here. So I wasn't able to record for you guys. So this is the first fill up that I have ever done with this truck. And luckily this truck has ran absolutely amazing. It's been amazing to drive. Uh, we're in love with it already. And it's actually been uh, quite enjoyable I kind of almost like it better I think it drives better than the f-150 I don't know if I dare say that it is a three-quarter ton truck so the suspensions a little rough and it is super super long but I'm in love with the diesel it's got a lot of power and it seems pretty fuel efficient 173,670 miles on the truck uh, we're filling it up right now and then we're gonna get headed on for the rest of our trip from here to Rexburg, which is another about four hours. So, as in terms of a road tripper, this truck's been super comfortable and fun to drive. Rexburg, we made it 470 some odd miles later. Truck ran perfectly, and the parking spot that I chose is uh, exact distance from the closest outlet to the block heater, so I think we're all set to drive to Grace in the morning. We packed in the few things that we don't need there. Uh, we're gonna go to Grace tomorrow, be there for a couple days, come back here for Christmas, back to Grace, Grace, Rexburg, and then on home. So we're driving the Duramax quite a bit, and I think we've proven its reliability. It's been a nice truck so far. Uh, I don't wanna say that and then have something break down, but it seems like a really good truck. 173,700 and some odd miles. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, Hit that bell icon so that you're notified every time I upload a video. And uh, with that said, let's check out the Duramax in the morning. All right, so it's later in the afternoon than we thought we would be leaving. Uh, we got the truck loaded up. We're gonna head to Grace for a couple of days and then back here for Christmas to Rexburg. So I lied to you last night. The truck has 173,840 miles on it after our road trip yesterday. Uh, kind of keep track this whole video is going to be of us just driving and travel and quick vlog updates like this so trucks ran great it is snowing I had it plugged in overnight I don't know if we're gonna be able to plug it in when we're in grace and uh, it's actually not that cold it's 35 degrees outside right now so yep 173 840 well I guess I should have plugged her in last night that was kind of a rough cold start and the Duramax sat for I don't know 16 hours or something.
Should have plugged it in. A little cold this morning. Uh, I can wear, or I'm out here in short sleeves comfortably, so it's really not that cold right now, but it got pretty cold last night. It was snowing and windy, but uh, we're finally gonna leave Grace back to Rexburg. We're gonna run a bunch of errands in Rexburg. Uh, we got a trailer yesterday, and we're gonna pick it up on Tuesday when I have a fifth wheel hitch installed in the truck, so that's exciting. Kind of an update on everything, and I'm gonna be introducing the trailer to you guys soon. It's just a little flatbed. Um, so yeah, we're gonna go get plates for this truck, plates for another car, and uh, just some other things coming up to the channel soon for you guys. So stay tuned to the channel, subscribe if you have not already, especially if you wanna see more content on my O2 Duramax that is super clean. It's a two owner, I'm the third owner. That's exciting. So it is a morning of wet slush here in Rexburg. The truck's covered. We got about three, four inches of snow last night. And I just went back, or I just got back from running. Uh, it seemed dry then, but now that it's on the truck, it seems pretty wet. So uh, we're gonna get the truck loaded up once again. This is probably like the fourth time. It is the day after Christmas. I hope you guys had a wonderful Christmas. Uh, that's weird to say because this video is uh, probably gonna come out well into the new year. But with that said, hope you guys had an amazing Christmas. We're gonna be driving back to Grace. We're gonna get a hitch, a fifth wheel hitch put in this truck on Tuesday. And then we're gonna go pick up the fifth wheel flatbed, the gooseneck flatbed that I have to tow back to Wyoming for work next summer. This is kind of a work vehicle, so uh, you know, it's a little bit different driving around, keeping a log of the miles, especially when the miles do not show up on the dash. I have got to get that fixed or it'll be uh, very expensive in the long run. They show up off and on, but uh, not consistently. And uh, besides that and the two front seat belts, which I'm going to be replacing soon in a video, are really the only complaints that I have with the Duramax. We've averaged this whole time almost 20, 20 some miles to the gallon. It's 35 gallon tank, it does like almost 600 miles to a tank. So that's actually super, super cool. Uh, it gets better fuel economy than uh, my F-150, but uh, in the long run, this will probably be more expensive to drive because of uh, breakdowns and repairs and things, which of course, I'm gonna go over in another video of what it's like to own a diesel, its maintenance, what's required on it, and then the service logs that, uh, that come with this truck from almost the beginning of its lifetime so that's exciting if you haven't already hit subscribe and that bell icon so that you're notified weekly when i upload a video and of course like this video share it with your friends help support us here on youtube we've already driven over 500 miles on the stir max all right now we're in grace it seems super late it's only 5 30 173 on the car so about 130 miles 5 30 truck did amazing again i think we were in logan last getting the trailer and the fifth wheel hitch put in the truck uh, we got all of that done my iphone <laughs> ran out of space and so i had to stop recording unfortunately subscribe to the channel if you haven't already because i have a cool first impressions video of a 2020 dodge caravan coming out along with a ton of other content on this truck we've had a really fun time here in grace as always and now it is time for us to head home but unfortunately uh, i had a family member pass away and so we have a funeral tomorrow in pocatello so today we're going to be towing the trailer to blackfoot dropping it off rexburg pocatello back to blackfoot and then on to wyoming on wednesday so uh this trip once again it seems like it always does when we come to idaho has got a little bit extended. But I'm gonna show you guys a fifth wheel hitch. We're gonna start the truck up, show you the trailer. We're gonna finish packing and we're gonna hit the road. Here is that fifth wheel hitch that they installed. It's just a B&W turnover ball. Uh, I did it at Heritage Chrysler and Logan. I think they did an okay job. I wouldn't recommend them. Uh, of course, they're not a sponsor of the video, but I wouldn't recommend them just because they don't usually service Chevys and so it took them forever. I mean, I've never put one of these on and I feel like I could have done it faster. So there's that. And here is the gooseneck trailer that we purchased for work this next summer. It's a two and five sixteenths, just a regular old gooseneck. It uh, has a lot of storage options right here, which I really like. It's got the double jack. It's 25 foot long deck rated for 20,000 pounds, I believe. 
It's a tandem dually, 10,000 pound axles. It's got the standard ramps in the back with this uh, thing that can flip down or up to make it uh, flat all the way across. And uh, it's a really, really nice trailer. Uh, when I started looking for a trailer, I never imagined that we'd end up with something like this. It's got overload jacks down here and a step over here. I was hoping to find something used. This is a 2021 and uh, it's just near impossible right now to even find a trailer like this in the new market. So unfortunately nobody's selling them, but uh, I guess it all works out in the end. We ended up with this super nice trailer that uh, it's gonna work really well for us. And then I think when we're done, we'll be able to sell it, so. All right, so that was the first time hooking up a fifth wheel by myself. I think it went okay. Um, that's a good looking trailer. It's a good looking truck. It's an old truck, but it is really, really good looking. And I absolutely love uh, how it looks when it's pulling with this trailer. Now, unfortunately, I found out that my tow haul mode is not working on this truck. And uh, that's gonna be an interesting trip all the way back to Wyoming. This trailer weighs almost six and a half thousand pounds. It uh, didn't even have a single hiccup pulling it over here though in overdrive. Uh, I'm just worried about when we get some weight on the trailer, how it's going to handle <laughs> without that overdrive. So I'm definitely going to have to uh, go and get that uh, fixed at a dealership along with my instrument cluster and a number of other things. But uh, if you want to know everything that is wrong with my 2002 Duramax, subscribe to the channel because that video is coming up. All right, so we're here at my grandma's. Uh, I've featured this location on the channel a few times in Blackfoot. Just got the trailer unhooked here by the old barn and what a sight it is. Got the Duramax back here and uh, apparently no one's here. So I don't know what we're doing now, but uh, we'll be back to pick this trailer up in a couple of days to head home to Wyoming. Uh, we have finally got everything in the truck and we are headed back to Wyoming today first on to Rigby to grab the trailer and then on our way all right we got the trailer all connected up got it fully loaded on the old Duramax and uh, we're ready to go to Wyoming oh it's gonna be a long drive all right just went through the most annoying fill up I've ever done for almost 16 gallons of diesel it's because we're at a truck stop and that's a truck nozzle. Doesn't fit in there, so I had to hold it so it didn't spray everywhere. The uh, trailer here is nice and salty, so we're gonna have to be washing the truck and the trailer when we get back in to Wyoming. Um, it's been a good drive so far. We're halfway there, four hours, four hours to go. Uh, I could not get my in-bed light thing to stay in, so hopefully that don't come out and drag. And, uh, it looks like everything so far is pretty good. I better move the ladders back a little bit, but uh, it's been an enjoyable trip. Lots and lots of salt in the truck and trailer though. Of course, we had to stop here at McDonald's in Columbus to get some holiday pie. Oh my goodness, this truck's <laughs> gonna need some serious, serious cleaning when we're done. And uh, the trailer as well just looks completely completely white now I don't know if I really showed you guys this trailer in good lighting or not the deck is absolutely beautiful I'm gonna feel really bad when we get a drip of oil on this thing of course it's got the 14 ply tires two 10,000 pound tandem dulia axles um, rampage ramps or I'm not sure what you want to call those it's got the spare tire up top it's a uh, not a low profile gooseneck a little bit taller than the truck and then right in here, I don't think I showed you guys this, but we got chains, boomers, all that good stuff. Probably put a lock on this for when it's out in the field. So that's a really, really convenient storage spot, better than the storage spot up here on the trailer. Then uh, the Duramax has been a champ. It has been running since nine o'clock this morning. Kind of feel bad for it, but of course it's held its temperature beautifully. Same with the uh, transmission and all that, so it's a very, very nice truck. Yes, my 2002 Duramax is 18 years old, but it pulls this trailer beautifully. My tow haul mode is not working, 
So I haven't shut overdrive off at all today and I haven't needed to. We've gone up some pretty steep inclines and some pretty steep declines and the trucks handled it amazingly. The transmission knows how to shift down when it needs to and the only really annoying thing is that sometimes I want it to stay shifted down but of course I don't want to keep speeding up so then the transmission shifts up when I don't want it to but uh, I need to get the tow haul mode fixed on this which I'm going to when I get the instrument cluster fixed so uh, that's kind of an unfortunate thing I don't know how it's going to handle when we actually put some weight on the trailer supposedly the trailer weighs like 6,000 pounds I don't think it's that heavy I think truck and trailer combined right now and maybe 10,000 pounds uh, maybe a little more maybe a little less I don't know but uh, other than that the uh, the trucks handled really really well today on the road trip we've gone maybe uh, 300 miles about and we have another you know about two and a half three hours to go so uh, I've actually <clears throat> I've actually really enjoyed the trip today we've put way over a thousand miles on the Duramax I know this video has been kind of boring but uh, as far as a test drive for this truck uh, I think it's going to work really well for us this next year. I'm super glad we bought a diesel pickup over a gas pickup. Now for the price, I could have bought a much newer gas powered pickup, but these diesel motors never lack power. They're built for pulling and they also last a really long time. So at 175,000 miles, yes, that's a lot of miles, but uh, in theory, it should be about the same amount of wear and tear as a newer gas pickup with about a hundred thousand miles and uh, this has the Allison transmission I think it's a five speed I really like it for pulling with this trailer I can't wait to get weight on here to really test it out but I love the fuel economy of the diesel and in a later video subscribe I'm gonna talk about why I chose a diesel engine over a gas motor and we're back with truck and trailer we've just got a move a few things to park it in here oh man riding in the truck for seven hours makes you a little bit sore but uh i love how this duramax this trailer looks yes it's old on uh, a trailer that's 11 years newer but it's uh it's just a surreal feeling and super cool haven't sold the dodge yet please come buy it uh hopefully i'll have it sold by the time this video's up and then uh, the camry and the f-150 looking chill it's good to be back good to be home park this trailer up here on the pad but if you guys like this video like it subscribe to the channel for more great content to come better content than this boring old travel video but the duramax performed absolutely fine for about 1500 miles uh, that's really what we wanted to test out taking this truck on a road trip how is it how's the fuel economy all of that uh, probably wouldn't be my first winter vehicle <laughs> to choose to take uh, in terms of driving around town and whatnot, but it's a great road tripper and it's pretty fuel efficient. Again, get out, enjoy your guys' automotive ownership, and I'll catch you in the next video.